Hello everybody and welcome. Today we will be talking about uh, SRS. What is SRS, how to create SRS and why we use SRS. Please watch this video till end so that you can have a better understanding of SRS. Clear requirements help development teams create the right product and a software requirement specification helps you lay the groundwork for product development. We will define what this is when you would use one and five steps to write an SRS document. What is a software requirement specification document? A software requirement specification is a document that describes what the software will do and how it will be expected to perform. It also describes the functionality the product needs to fulfill all stakeholders needs, for example, business or users. A typical SRS includes a purpose and overall description specific requirements. The best SRS document defines how the software will interact when embedded in hardware or when connected to other softwares. Good SRS document also account for real life user. So now let's review the reasons for using SRS. SRS describes how a software system should be developed. It provides everyone involved with a roadmap for that project. SRS in software engineering creates the basis for all documentations. It sets your communication on the right track. It helps you understand the product. SRS documentation helps to grow your development standards. It helps to cover risks on each development stage. So there are five steps to create SRS, a good SRS. The number one is start with outline, then clarify project overview, then understand users and project risks, detail the project requirements, and get the SRS approval at the final stage. So let's discuss about the SRS outlines as always it is important to make your document structured and focused this will help your outsourcing development team avoid unnecessary effort in reading project requirements back and forth as a result it will reduce the risk of missing information across the teams you should also ensure the three main parts of the srs including introduction overall description and detailed features and requirements to create a good outsourcing software document now let's take a look at an outline example here the first thing is introduction. Within introduction, you can write project purpose, project scope, glossary, and reference. The second is overall description, where we can write user needs, assumptions, and dependencies. And the third is detailed features and requirements, where we can write actually the functional requirements, non-functional requirements, external interface requirements. We will go into detail of all these one by one. So let's start with introduction. In introduction, we clarify the project overview. Starting the SRS with a clear introduction to describe the project purpose and give readers an overview of the project big picture. The introduction should cover the following content. The number one is project purpose. What is the project built for? Answer this question to help the readers understand the aims and objectives of the project. The second is project scope. What is the business goal? What values does the project deliver? Find the answer to these questions to make clear the project sophistication. Glossary and reference. Explain the terms used in the document. Show your references to readers to consolidate the transmitted information. So the next is overall description. Here we understand users and project risks. All de developing effort is to ensure that the project is completed and meet the user expectation. To achieve this success, you need to pay enough attention to analyze. User needs. Define your software's end user and how they use it. Correctly understanding the user's needs will give you a clear direction on how your software should be built. Assumptions and dependencies. Think of assumptions and dependencies that might impact fulfilling the requirements outlined in your SRS. 
and take note of external factors. For example, software components reused from another project. This is to prepare for any upcoming challenges in the project implementation and reduce the risk of project failure. So now about features and requirements, where we can actually write the project requirements in detail. Clear requirements can be considered as keys to the project deliverables in general and the project success in particular. The more specific requirements, the easier it will be for the developers to plan and implement the project. Requirements are various, but mainly divided into functional requirements, non-functional requirements, and external interface requirements. Each type of requirement needs to be specified direct and differently. So let's talk about functional requirements. Functional requirements describe what the software will do and define how it will function to meet user expectations. You should also mention the acceptance criteria for these functional requirements to determine if a function is completed and performs as expected. Non-functional requirements. Non-functional requirements include usability, performance, software quality, security, and so on. They can be seen as extensions that help describe how the software will perform. External interface requirements. External interface requirements are types of functional requirements, and these interfaces include user, software, hardware, system, communication interfaces, etc. So the last thing is get the SRS approval to ensure the SRS accuracy and objectivity and the mutual agreements in how the software should run. The key stakeholders should be involved to approve the SRS. By doing this, you can reduce the risk of wasting time, effort, and money in the future unnecessary changes. So as a final thought, the SRS is important because it gives you a source of information where you can easily manage requirements throughout the outsourcing software development process. In this video, I aimed to help you get the basic ideas of the SRS structure and hopefully I did it. Thank you for watching.